Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to show you how to encrypt your data using a free piece of software called Veracrypt, and specifically how to set this up so you can do it portably on our old friend via USB drive. Right, well here we are on a Windows 10 desktop where I'm going to go to my trusty Chrome browser where I've already gone to the site veracrypt.codeplex.com or we can download the Veracrypt application. If we go to Downloads, taking a little time, isn't that a bit worrying? You will see this is a place you can get all sorts of versions of Veracrypt. This includes Linux and Macs versions, but I want the Windows version, which is recommended because it's obviously had a look at my machine. So we'll click on that. It says where we want to save it. I always make sure computers ask me where things should be saved. I've got them set up properly. Uh, C download is fine, so we'll save that down there. And that didn't take, oh, that was actually quite quick, wasn't it, for once? Very, very fast download, very good. So if we now then uh, click on that, might as well run it from where it is. Do we want it to make changes? Yes, we do. I will accept the license agreement. How many of those will we accept in our life? Now, now it gives us two options. It says repair, reinstall. It will be installed if you haven't played with this previously. That's not the option I'm going to use here. I'm going to use the extract option. I want to create a set of files where I can move around between devices entirely independently of one particular computer. So I'll select extract and go next. It'll then say, are you sure you really want to do this? And I'll go, of course I do. I've thought about it. Are you really, 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 really sure? Yes, I'm still sure. And we'll finally extract the files. We'll leave them in C download for now. That's absolutely fine. It'll do that. There we are, all files have been extracted. I'm not going to consider making a donation right now, but who knows in the future, and we'll get rid of the web browser. So, what we have here is our uh, folder called Veracrypt sitting in C download with loads and loads of files in it, most of which are, as you can probably tell, language files. But down here are the files we actually need, the files you need to actually make Veracrypt run properly. And you've got, as you see, some formatting files, there's a PDF guide if you want to use that, etc. But all the things above here, all these language files, really are a bit of a waste of time. I'm going to get rid of those. Yes, I'm being radical today. So all I need to run Veracrypt is to take those files and to run this main exe file. So I can run Veracrypt exe. Do you want it to make changes to your computer? If you run this portable type of mode, you'll have to be in administrative mode when you run things and you'll get this message every time. Doesn't bother me very much. And we can then now, in the Veracrypt main window, here we are, we can create a new volume. You only have to do this the first time you use it to set up your encrypted file space. So we'll click on create volume. We want to create an encrypted container. If you like a block of data, which is going to sit on our USB drive, which will contain encrypted files. Veracrypt does not encrypt existing files. It creates an encrypted container into which to put your files and obviously take them out of when you want to look at them. We'll click on next. Standard Veracrypt volume will be fine. Volume location, we're going to have to select a file. I will leave it in C download Veracrypt for now. We can move things around later. I'm going to call this EC videos, explaining computers videos. This is a file in which I'll keep explaining computers video files securely in my pocket. I wouldn't want people stealing those. There we are, that's good. I can go to next. Uh, we will stick with the um, encryption options it's given us. They're, they're absolutely fine. Uh, we need to give it a size. This is going to be quite a big file. I'm going to make this, I think, about, oh, what should we do? I'm going to make it 30 gigabytes. That's a big file, which will basically be a place to put all the encrypted stuff. There we are. And I need to come up with a password. I know what password I'm going to use. I need to put that in. There we are. That's my password. Or we'll put in and put in again. Um, don't need anything else there. And we can go to Next, it's going to say, my password is too short. It likes passwords over 20 characters, which I'm sure is a good idea, but for me, I'm sure you, I think that's a pretty good one. So we're going to uh, stick with that. We recommend, oh, you want to continue? Yes. Do you intend to store files larger than four gigabytes in this Veracrypt volume? 
I may do that because I shoot ProRes video that can get very large occasionally. On this screen, it generates the random key that make it random. What I'm doing here is moving around my mouse pointer, lots and lots and lots. It is helping to generate that random number. Probably you see as I move the mouse, it generates more random data. The more you do this, the more encrypted it's going to be. It's, it's very exciting. I think that's probably enough for now. And then we'll click on the format. It'll now get on with that. And of course, that might take a little bit of time. So we'll speed through as necessary. And there we are. It has finished marvelously. Press OK there. So um, that's fine. And we can come out of that. So I'm now back on my uh, Veriscript main screen. And I can now actually mount that volume to check everything's worked. So what you have to do here, so it's the same every time you launch Veracrypt, you basically launch a program, you pick a letter. I'm going to pick J because it's a nice drive letter. And I will now select my file, which is sitting where the Veracrypt program is. It's always a good place. I did put it there. And um, where? Right at the top. I'm looking straight at it. EC videos there, obviously alphabetically. At the top, I will open that. I mean, I can mount the volume and it'll mount it as if it was a disk as drive J. If I press on mount, I'll have to put my password in. And there we are, and okay. It'll take it a second, have a little think about it. And there we are, it's actually there. I can open it up from here. But also if we look back in um, this PC, you'll see we have here local disk J, 29.9 gigabytes free, um, and that's just like a normal drive. So I could actually copy files into there and they would be encrypted, and I can use J just as if it's a normal drive on the computer. Now, what I want to do is to put this onto my USB drive. My USB drive is the Corsair 64 gigabyte um, USB 3 drive I showed you a few videos back, uh, which is uh, currently empty. So all I need to actually do is to get the files I've actually got here, all these files, this um, just over 30 gigabytes of data, it's the massive volume and the files to, to run it, and to dump them into this drive. Now, in fact, I can't actually do that, and I'll prove it to you. If I took that up file EC videos, and I went to a copy, and I put it over here, it would fail. If I did paste, ah, that's a different uh, message I expected to get. Obviously, I can't do that. I can't copy it at the moment because it's still running, isn't it? Of course it is. I've got to dismount the volume before I've got a hope of, of copying it. Right, let's get rid of Veracrypt a second. Let's have another go. I don't often show you my mistakes. There was the one, one of the first. I will try and copy that file. It still won't work, but it'll fail for the better reason. If I paste that, it'll say, video is too large of a destination file system. That's because when you get a USB drive, by default, it will come with the FAT32 file system used to format the drive, which is good because it means you can use your drive on all different types of computers, older Windows machines, um, Macs and Linux, everything else. But if we want to handle big files, and remember we've got a 30 gigabyte file here, a container in which smaller files will sit, we can't copy it to the FAT32 drive because FAT32 is limited to four gigabyte files. Hope you're still with me. So what I need to do is to format that drive with a different file system. Now, Windows gives you a choice. You can use NTFS or XFAT. So I'm going to reformat this using XFAT, which is a file system which is most suited for a flash memory. So I'll basically click on Start. Warning, all data will be lost. Of course it will, yes. We'll do that, won't take very long. Our file, system, our drive, has now got um, not the FAT32 file system, but XFAT. That means if we open it up over there, oh, why do I always have windows on top of each other? I like working like this, I don't care. I can now take all of these files and copy them across. Although, to be honest, I'm not going to take that one and that one and that one, uh, but I will take everything else. Um, I think that's all I really need. Yes, I'll take that lot and I will copy, and in fact, to be tidy, I'm going to create a new folder here, which I'm going to call secure. I could call it bibble blubble blibble, but I'm going to call it secure, and I'm going to paste into there all of these files. 
That of course will take, again, a little bit of time. Remember this is 30 gigabytes of data, effectively a blank block of encrypted space in which files will go. So again, I'll speed things on. And here we are, we're nearly there up to 97%. Good to see we've been averaging uh, well over 100 megabytes a second in this copy. The, the Corso drive, as we saw a few videos back, is very fast. And if you're thinking, could I have created the volume directly onto the drive? Yes, of course I could. I just thought I'd do it this way to uh, show you things like the issue with the file system. So there we are. That's copied over to our uh, Corsair drive, and it's all very happy. I'm going to close that down, and I'll close that down as well. I'm going to tidy things up and then open them up again. Uh, and I'm also going to remember on um, C down, though, to get rid of EC video, because that's a big file, 30 gigabytes, a big chunk of the, uh, the SSD on this computer, so I'm going to get rid of that. There we are. That's gone. And we can see it's gone because C is back to having some space left. So let's imagine I wanted to actually work with that drive. All I would do, I'd have plugged it in, it would have come up as Corsair, which is now showing obviously a lot of the file space used, but it's actually empty. This is the one of the problems of using something like VeroCrypt. It says the drive's half full, but I know most of that space isn't. I can now open that drive, open up secure, run VeroCrypt XE. Yes, you can do things to run it automatically. I don't like them. Um, yes, I'll run it. I will then select my file, which will be now from the Corsair EC videos. Open. I can now mount it. Let's mount it to K this time. Put in my password. There we are, and OK. It will then just mount up the drive. That time is the price we pay for using this stuff. And you'll now see drive K has come up, which is, as we can see, largely free. So I've opened up, there we are, there's my drive K. This is the virtual space inside the VeroCrypt container. We should just put some files in to prove it is working, I guess. So what I'll do is I'll have an even bigger mess on my desktop. What have we got here? What's in explaining videos? Anything I can check with? Uh, I can't remember what these are. These are just, oh, they're just thumbnails, aren't they? But what I will do, I will copy those and I will copy them across to my space on K and paste. So those files are now stored in my secure space. And if we look at uh, that, you can see that um, it's not enough to register, is it? But some of the space has now gone. And what we would then do if we wanted to leave this system, got too many things open here, Chris, we would then dismount the volume. There we are. And we could then ideally also eject the drive. And there we are, it's been removed. So in theory, I now have a USB drive which I can plug into any modern Windows computer and access securely stored files. So uh, let's see if we can actually do that. Right, well I've now gone to another computer. This is my uh, lovely little netbook, my Acer 725. I'm going to plug in my uh, USB drive. Sadly, I can't plug it into the USB 3 port on this machine because I've got an HDMI lead plugged into um, show you this screen, and it won't fit beside the Corsair USB key. So it's plugged into USB 2, but at least it'll prove the point. So the drivers come up, as it would on any modern Windows operating system, as in one which will support XFAT. I can open up Corsair. I can open up Secure. I can then uh, run VeraCrypt. Do I want to do that? Yes, I do. And then I can uh, select a file. We've seen that previously. EC videos, lovely, and open. I now need to select a drive letter. I'll go for K. I do like K. My screen scaling here isn't showing me all the buttons properly. I know that mount is down there. Put my password in. There we are. It'll probably take it a second to open this thing up, not because it's got a large volume, but because uh, this is a very slow computer doing quite a lot of work. But there we are, this has now worked. We can see we've got our uh, drivers come up. And if we look back into a computer, you can see the Corsair drive is mounted, but the one we would actually work from is local disk K, which is the um, secure drive. And inside that, there are the files we saved a few minutes ago, which are just thumbnails from my videos. Yay, isn't that exciting? Oh, the irony of showing a hardware encrypted drive here. There we are. 
So clearly it all works and we'll get rid of that. So you've seen the principle, now on this machine we could use this as a secure drive, save our files into it, hopefully you've got the, the essence of what I've done here. I've now got a USB drive which I've got a secure element of it and I can take that to any PC running Windows and just run up those VeroCrypt files and get to them. Nothing has to be installed on any PC, it's a very flexible system. VeroCrypt is a great piece of software for keeping your data safe. As I explained almost a year ago, you can actually encrypt your data using dedicated hardware, and I'm still a big fan of that type of USB drive. This said, VeroCrypt is clearly a far cheaper solution, and certainly if you're dealing with very large quantities of data. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.